Hi, today I'm gonna be showing you how to create this spiky effect in 3ds Max just like Andrew Kramer said videocopilot.net now he mentioned that he created it in 3ds Max with the particle system randomly positioning spikes um, as I can see it's positioned on a ball so that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do um, that's my attempt well maybe not as good looking as Andrew's but the basics uh, are the same so we're gonna be creating this effect so I'll just reset no yes <coughs> perspective first of all we're gonna create a sphere just a simple sphere the size doesn't matter segments well I don't know maybe 40 doesn't matter because we're not gonna be seeing it very much um, now we're gonna create our custom particle which is gonna be a cone Okay, like this. Radius height doesn't matter. I'm just gonna scale it up. Like so. Make it narrow. More spiky. And we're gonna add a bend modifier. Bend. Angle. Let's see. Now it's rotating the wrong way. What we could do is just scale it um, in the right direction or um, reposition the gizmo, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Turn on the angle snap to rotate perfect 90 degrees. There we go. That's okay. Now, we'll play with the angle settings. Now we're not going to get the high quality from um, a few faces here so we're gonna bump that up to about 15 or so to get a much much smoother look like so and that's pretty much it we're gonna create another custom particle by shift dragging copy not instance because instance will will make uh, both both of those identical um, when we change them um, bend angle a lot more now I'm gonna play with bend center which is gonna give us different results there we go and scale it so it looks like this maybe give it some more segments 20 Okay, that's look that looks nice. Now we're gonna create a basic material. Um, white color. Drop it here, here. Well, not necessarily on the spikes, but I like to see them all in the same color. Turn off the grid by pressing the G button on the keyboard. Now we're gonna create a particle system. Not a PF source, but a particle array. Now the size doesn't matter, it's just um, an icon, we can hide it, it's not gonna render out. Uh, object based emitter will allow us to position these spikes onto the ball, so we're gonna pick the ball. And we're starting to see particles emitting from the ball, but we don't want them to fly all over the screen, so we're gonna turn the speed to zero. So we'll just spawn and stay there. Um, right, we'll play with that. So, what now? Particle type. Uh, particle type should be instanced geometry and instancing parameters. Pick object, and we're gonna pick our spike. No, but now we see nothing has changed because the display parameters are wrong we're gonna display as mesh that's quite a few but we're gonna bump this setting all the way to 100 percent in the viewport display now depending on how many particles you have this might crash your system because there's quite a lot of stuff going on here so let's leave it to about 50 
Okay, I made stop. 100. Well, no reason to do that because we're just gonna. We're not gonna animate it, but I like to, you know, have some variation here. Da -da -da -da, life 100, so they don't disappear. Uh -huh. User rate use total. I'm gonna use 100 particles. Now they're all looking pretty much the same here. So we're gonna edit some of the parameters. Rotation and collision. Spin time, 100. Variation, 100%. So we got the nice random stuff there. Okay. Now, what else do we need? Um, we need to, to adjust the particle size. Okay, where is this size now? This one. Let's have all the particles there. Size. There we go. Now we're gonna have like 0.4 for start, but variation. We're gonna choose 100 and then edit the size because some of the particles may become very large and some of them very small. So we don't want particles to be too large. So I usually adjust the size after the variation. Now, if you don't like how something looks, you can always like, mm, let's see, oh, where is, oh yeah, uniqueness. If you don't like something looking wrong or you just like to reposition everything, pick a new seed and it'll just update accordingly. Oh, that's, this looks nice. Now, let's put material onto the particle array. Uh, now, the thing, the common thing with these particle systems and with instance geometry is we see kind of these flat surfaces that we wouldn't want to appear in our renders. Now, there are a couple of ways to fix it. Um, one of the ways is affecting the pivot and repositioning it so that the particles generate um, somewhere. Now, another thing you might have noticed is our particles are not flat, narrow, like these. Um, so to fix this, we're gonna have to go into the Utilities panel and Reset X Form, Reset Selected. Now everything is fine. Uh, we do, however, see the flat faces here. So I'm just gonna reposition the pivot again, back there, reset X form, okay, that doesn't look too bad, now we're gonna scale the ball down, this also removes that weird flat surface effect. Now we're probably probably won't gonna see this from this angle so nothing to worry about. We can hide the selection. Now okay now we're gonna want some more random particles so on the same ball so what we're going to do is uh, back to the crate. Okay. We're gonna clone the particle system by shift dragging. This is gonna double the particles. Copy. Now we don't see that yet, but if we pick a new random seed, there they are. But they're the same, so we want to change that into pick object the next cone. Again we have the same problem. So we're gonna pick the cone set X form. And now we're seeing a lot of flatting here because the pivot is in the wrong place. So what we're going to do is affect pivot only. Again, we're going to reposition it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see there. Reset again. Now this reset X form modify is a modifier actually. It adds to your stack, but if 
you collapse everything, it will be gone.